Romans chapter number 12. On Wednesday nights, we've been going through our spiritual leadership in the home and spiritual leadership uh, in our lives and dealing with some things. We've went over several different aspects of spiritual leadership. And uh, so tonight, we've, we've talked about the speech, we talked about touch, we talked about hearing, things like that. So tonight, we're going to talk about the nose, amen? The nose, smelling, also known as discernment, amen? And uh, how do you say, how in the world does that apply? How in the world can you make the nose and smell apply to the Bible and discernment, amen? Amen. You ever smelled something that just stunk? There was a problem somewhere, right? Whether whether it be you stepped in something, amen. Whether it be there was a, a plumbing leak, whether it be there was a sewage leak. Uh, I remember a few weeks ago, we were downstairs having our Sunday night fellowship. Someone came to me and said, Brother Jesse, there's a problem. Amen. So Went back there, and I didn't see anything at first. But, Brother Greg, I smelled something. Amen? And when I smelled something, I thought, you know what? There is a problem back here. And uh, which, so I smelled it. Therefore, it discerned that there was an issue. Because when you smell that smell in a kitchen, somebody help me, something's wrong. Amen? When you smell that smell coming out of the bathroom, something's wrong. When you are, when you have a leak in your walls and you go in your bedroom and you smell mold, there's an issue there. Amen. Wouldn't you say that? Wouldn't you agree with me? And so we know there that uh, discernment is very important because discernment, Brother Keith, can prevent a problem from getting worse. Discernment when, when caught early, an issue when caught early, uh, can now say we wouldn't have been here that night that we had the fellowship. Say we never went downstairs, we never, uh, we never would have went down there, and for days it would have gotten worse and worse and worse until somebody up here walked in that side door and said, Miss Cindy would have said, Brother Jesse, can you go downstairs because there's a smell. And we smelled it and we caught it early. So discernment is a good thing to have, wouldn't you say, when it comes to spiritual leadership. Being able to discern. I wrote this down. I wrote this, this big theological quote down. Y'all ready? Y'all better write this down. The sooner you can smell a problem, the better. Amen. The sooner that you can smell a problem, the better. Amen. Uh, because if you don't smell it, what do you do a lot of times when you take a pack of bacon out of the refrigerator that you're just not quite sure about? You know you bought it on time and you know that, but what do you do? It smells okay. Amen. My wife now, she'll bring a gallon of milk to me because she knows I'll drink a gallon of milk. I don't care if it's on the edge of spoiling. Amen. I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll pour some, I'll put some cornbread in it and just eat it. Amen. She'll bring it to me and she'll, she'll say, it, do, it smells okay. Well, you taste it and I'll taste it and I'll say, it's fine. Amen. So typically when we're trying to discern whether or not there's an issue, there's a smell. Amen. And that, now I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, don't be going around your house smelling your spouse. Amen. But like, there's a problem there. Now, if you do smell them, there is a problem. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. But Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2, the Bible says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, that you may discern, that you may be able to tell whether or not uh, what, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Discernment. Discernment. Number one, let's look here at three things quickly and I'll be I'll let you go. Number one, discerning your environment. It's always good to discern your environment. It is not enough for the spiritual leader to just wing it. God has called us to be uh, astute and intentional on, on the things that we do. Discern what's going on around you. One of the things that one of the things when I 
worked at the prison and worked in the jail, the first thing they taught us, Brother Greg, was to be aware of your surroundings. Always be aware of what's going on around you. And that applies big time spiritually. Big time. Amen. We need to always try to be aware of what's going on in our home. What's going on with our children. What's going on spiritually in the lives of our spouse. What's going on spiritually between me and my wife. What's going on spiritually between me and my children. What's the spiritual temperature like. Is it hot or is it cold. Are my kids are, are my kids getting enough Bible intake? Are my kids what's my son's prayer life? And you said he's five. Yeah, he needs a prayer life. He's he's saved. He got saved. He needs to have some kind of a prayer life, whether it just be he's praying at night before he goes to bed, but he needs to know. And I need to be able to see what the spiritual environment is like in my life. I need to be able to see, as his spiritual leader, I need to be able to tell what his spiritual temperature is. I need to be able to tell uh, whether or not my wife is being able to have enough time to read her Bible because I'm not helping her with the kids. Maybe, maybe there's something else going on. We need to be able to look around us and discern what the environment is. It's important also to gather all the intel. You know what that means? The intelligence. Information before making your decision. <clears throat> I know so many times. Now, I know you other men aren't like this. But so many times, Brother Greg, I've jumped the gun. Am I the only one? I'm, I've jumped the gun. My wife will come in and say, I need to talk to you about something. And she'll say, it's about this. Well, let me tell you what I think about that right there. Now, that's a, I jumped the gun. I started making my decisions before I got all the intel. Amen. How many of y'all bought a car without getting all the intel? Or bought a house. We bought our house a couple years ago. And uh, when you walk in, everything looks, you know, we knew we had to do a little bit of work here and there. It was going to need some paint. But then we tore out this wall. And then we tore out that wall. And this plumbing needed to be fixed. And these pipes needed to be fixed. And I, I just walked through. I looked at it. I said, yeah, man, I, I can fix that. That's nothing. But then it just get worse and worse. And it got, the bill got bigger and bigger. My father-in-law said, you're going to need this and you're going to need that. You need two buckets of mud instead of just the one. You're going to need, you're going to need more, you're going to need more drywall than that. So before we make the decision, would y'all agree with me? It's good to, it's good to smell first. It's good to try to get all the intelligence. It's good to try to get all the information before we finally make the decision. <clears throat> the Lord knows exactly. In verse number two, he said that we may find that perfect will of God. And it's hard to do that. Listen, church, it's hard for us to do that if we don't have all the information. You know, when I, uh, when I met my wife, I was just ready to marry her. Because I knew, you know, she's pretty, she's smart. I gathered all the information. She's got all her teeth. Amen. She's pretty, you know. A lot prettier than, than I than I deserve. I didn't hear no amens right there. Thank y'all for that. Amen. And she's a whole lot prettier than I deserve. And man, and I knew, but now she wanted to go on some dates. Because she wanted to get all the information. 
And she still married me. Come on. I took I took one, a note out of Brother Mike's book, just stalk them until they just break. Amen. She finally just said, you know what, forget it. He's not going to leave me alone. Okay, fine. I just kept, I, literally, literally, I'd show up at her work. I'd just show up. She was dating another guy. I'd ride with that guy to her work with him to see hers. Amen. It didn't bother me. It, Miss Gail was just a speed bump on the way to get where I was going. Amen. They weren't married. Now, if they married, they'd been different. Just a little bit different, amen. It had been a little been different. That's a stop sign right there. That's not a speed bump. But she wanted to she wanted to get the information. Amen. You know, my son, he he's bad about just jumping into it. He he just wants to go. He just wants to get after it. I'm like, son, you don't know what all it's going to take to do this. Amen. It's good to get all the information. It's good to discern your environment. Number two, discerning your errors. It's important for you yourself to be able to, you already smell yourself. Amen. Realize that you have an unpleasant odor and then... Do something about it. You know, when we go when we go hunting, when we go hunting, when we go on these trips, I think it's some of those guys' goal to stink the worst. <laughs> I'm like, man, we have a shower, we have hot water, power. Take a shower, amen. And if you don't, you ain't riding in my truck. I don't want to sleep near you. I don't want to eat near you. Take a shower. It's important. Listen, when you start smelling yourself, you know something's wrong. And I, you know, I always, my, my granny used to always tell me this. She say, if you smell you, somebody else done smelled you. Amen. She's a good one. If you smell you, chances are somebody else done smelled you. So what do you mean by that spiritually? If you've got a problem, more than likely, by the time you realize it, somebody else doesn't realize it. So it's important. Paul said that it's a daily process. Paul said, I die daily. Daily. It's important to daily take an, take an examination, take a test. What is it that I did today that, was, that wasn't pleasing to the Lord? What is it that I did today that may have offended my brother? What is it that I did today that offended my sister? What can I do tomorrow to be better than I was the day before? Discerning your errors. It takes a big man or lady to say, I'm my problem. It takes a big person to stand up, put on their big boy pants and say, you know what? I was the problem. I was the issue. I was the one that caused the problem. I'm sorry. I was wrong. When I say that, my wife says, hold on a second. She says, hold on a minute. Say that again. You were wrong. Amen. And you're sorry. She wants to get it on video. Write it down. Put the date next to it. And we laugh about that. But you know what? It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be a rare occurrence that we apologize for something that we do wrong. And let me just say this. It's not because you don't do stuff wrong. Amen. Because we're we're just, we're, we're, we're wicked. The Bible says we're, we're, our hearts are desperately wicked. We're always going to be messing up. There ain't none of us in here tonight, not one of us in here tonight perfect. Ain't one of us in here tonight got it figured out. Ain't one of us in here tonight that's got it all figured out. Hey, we're always going to mess up. We're always going to make mistakes. But the big part about it is whether or not you can smell yourself, amen, and get it right. Get it right.
my granny, she'd give us one chance to take a bath or she is coming in there with that god-awful scrub brush. And she is looking in some places. We get out of the shower, she's going to look behind my ears. And she's going to look at my neck, see if I had that ring around my neck. And she's going to look at my fingernails, see if I got the dirt out from under. And if I didn't get it right, Brother Greg, the first time, God help us. She'd hold us down. I think she's trying to kill us. I don't know where she got. It was like she was scrubbing us with a with a wire brush. Granny, where'd you get that brush from? <laughs> it shouldn't have to come to that where someone has to come to you and say, you know what? Since you can't get it right, I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong. Because then it just, don't it mess things up then? It's a good thing to be able to discern whether or not you stink. Amen. Physically, literally, and spiritually. Amen. Discerning your errors. I don't ever want to get to the place. Where I, where I don't think I have problems. I don't ever want to get to the place, listen to me, I don't ever want to get to the place where I don't think my marriage has problems. I don't ever want to get to the place where I don't think, where I think I'm, the, I'm a good dad. Or I'm a, uh, you getting what I'm saying? Because if I ever get to that place where I think, oh, I've got it, I'm a good parent. Me and Brother Ed was laughing the other day about this preacher that wrote a book on parenting, and he had two toddlers. Right now is not the time for me to write a book on parenting. Because I, look here, I already know, okay, that I, now with the two that I got, I'm going to be able to write a whole series, amen, here in a few years. When they get about 20, I'm going to be able, we're going to be able to document some things. Amen. But right now is not the time. I don't know. I don't know. I do know what I was like at 15. Somebody say amen. I know what I was doing at 15, 14. I don't ever want to get to a place where I think I got it figured out. Because you know what happens then? The Bible says that pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. And it'll happen. God's word does not lie. That needs to be our prayer tonight. How can we discern? Lord, show me my errors. Show me. Lord, help me to be able to discern that when I stink. <laughs> Amen. Lastly, and I'm done. Discerning your enemies. Concerning your enemies. It's important to know that every day you will be faced with some sort of adversary. It's important. Every single day you're going to be faced with some kind of adversary. Somebody's going to come against you. Somebody's going to get under your skin. Somebody's going to get on your nerves. And it's important to be able to discern that so that you know when to just walk away. Amen. Amen. And look here, the sooner you can smell them, the better. Amen? I wrote this down. Use your personal detractors to locate your enemies. What does that mean? It means you know what you do. You know what bothers you. You know what gets you. You know what eats at you. Sometimes, sometimes it's good to just avoid that person. If you wake up one morning and you say, Aha, I sure hope I don't see so-and-so today. You know what's the best thing for you to do? Avoid so-and-so. Because if you don't, if you're anything like me, you're going to be sitting around and they're going to say something and you're going to say, You know what, i got something to tell you. 
And all, we all know when you start out with that right there, it ain't going to end good. How many of y'all have had those days? Amen. I've had those days with my in-laws. I've had those days with friends. I've had those days with co-workers. When I was, when I was working at that company and I've had those guys working for me, God help, God help them. I, I owe them an apology. Because some of them, they'd catch me that one day. They'd be like, hey, Jesse, can you meet me at the gas station and my truck won't start? But a great grown man now. I'd go up there and I'd tighten the battery terminal, get in the truck and start it up. You're an idiot. All you had to do was tight. Did you even check the battery terminal? Did you even pop the hood or you just called me? That's, that's the days you need to smell. Amen. That's the days where I should have said, hey, uh, Bobby, can you run up there and deal with this guy? Because I can't today. Y'all getting what I'm saying? Y'all looking like y'all know what I'm talking about. A couple of y'all looking at me like y'all know what I'm talking about. It feels good to be able to just get when we're on the same page. Amen. Sometimes we, sometimes we're bad about making enemies that don't really need to be our enemy. Because maybe there's something that's going on. There's something that irritates you. Something that rub, maybe. Let me just say this. Maybe your enemies with somebody else and you, because of that, you make an enemy that you didn't really have to have. Amen? Sometimes maybe there's something going on at work and you're just irritated with this person and you go home and you take it out on the wrong enemy. It wasn't Kelly's fault that that knucklehead didn't know how to check a battery terminal. But you know what I did sometimes? I kept it inside and I went home and I let my frustrations out on the wrong person. And they didn't deserve it. You know what I should have done? Should have smelled. I should have been smelling, looking for my enemy. Amen. When I was in, when I grew up in West Virginia, we bear hunted with dogs. And we'd ride around with 15 dogs in the back of a pickup truck. We always had that one dog that we'd put on the box or on the hood or on the hood of the truck. You say, on the hood, yes. We put him on the hood or on the top because you know why? He had the best nose. And you'd be driving down one of them logging roads and all of a sudden you'd hear him. Oh. And son, we'd drop 20 dogs out because he done located you know what we need to be like? We need to be on the hood. We need to be on the dog box. We need to be on the top, looking, smelling. Because, because what, what that does is, that lets us know, that lets the driver know to go ahead and shut her down. There's something going on right here. We need to be able to discern, to locate our issues and our problems. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Heads bowed, eyes closed for just a minute. Let me ask you all this. <clears throat> Let me ask you this tonight. How many of you would say, Well, Jesse, I've been dealing with some... I'm not the best at discernment. Would you slip your hand up and put it right down so they preach and pray for me? I'm just not the best at smelling. I see those hands. How many of you would say, Brother well, Jesse, pray for me. I've been dealing with some enemies in my life, and I'd like to be able to smell them and discern 
the best days that I just don't need to go around them and maybe sometimes I, the days that I just need to avoid that problem. Would you put your hand up, put it down? How many of you would say sometimes, Brother Jesse, I discern and make enemies. I make enemies out of the wrong person sometimes. I take it out on the wrong crowd. My hand's up. How about it tonight? As I pray, I want you to, maybe you'd like to sit there and pray in your seat or you'd like to come to the altar, one or the other. It's open. But I'd like for us tonight to be able to get better at discernment in our life. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. We ask you to help us. Lord, I know that through this study I've been challenged in many ways, but I think this lesson tonight has challenged me a little bit more than any to be able to discern the things that are going on in my life. Discern and know when there's a problem discern and know that when there's an issue, when there's something going on, when there's a, or when my wife is dealing with something or my children are dealing with something, there's a something going on. Lord, I pray, God, that you wouldn't let me just walk around blind. But, Lord, that I'd be able to smell it and I'd be able to discern it and I'd be able to know what's going on and know the right path to take and the right actions to take. Lord, I sure do love you tonight. I'm thankful that, Lord, you care enough about us to, for us to be able to fix our problems. I pray, God, that you'd help us, lead us, and guide us, and direct us. Lord, we sure do love you, and I thank you, and I praise your holy name for being so good to us. I pray, God, that you'd bring us back here safely on Sunday. Give us a good crowd, a good group of people that come ready to worship. And we'll be sure to thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Be with these people now as they depart. And pray God you keep them all safe as they travel home. Be with them throughout the remainder of the week. We sure do love you. And I thank you. And I praise you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.